Good morning and welcome to another edition of Ardex on Facebook Live uh, or our Technical Tuesday series. What we're going to be looking at today is uh, NA and CL and the benefits of using uh, which product where really uh, and how you know certain products can make your life easier uh, and where CL, uh, CL sits in our range of products. Okay. So thank you to everybody that's tuning in again um, and thank you to everybody that tuned in last week. Uh, good response from last week's video and I hope you enjoyed the K39. And like we say every week, you know, I hope everybody is managing now to get back to work and um, not being troubled too much by the COVID-19 virus. So um, hopefully you're all okay and, and no problems. I'll announce the winners to last week's competition uh, later on. Quite some good entries this week. so. That's coming up later on. So first of all, we're going to go into Arditex NA. Arditex NA has been around for quite a while now at Ardex. Um, premium product uh, in regards to what it will do. The good thing about uh, Arditex NA is it covers most substrates, near enough every substrate, without the need for a primer. Okay. In fact, if you were to tune into one of my earlier sessions that I did from home, when we first got, well, we're in lockdown. I spoke about uh, Arditex NA and going over calcium sulfates and stuff like that. And that is the time you do need to prime. Whenever you come across a calcium sulfate, please make sure it's dry. Please make sure it's always been uh, prepared, any latents removed off it if it's uh, when required. And then make sure you prime it, okay, before you put down Arditex NA. Uh, even though Arditex NA is so super, uh, you know, a super product, it still needs a barrier between the calcium sulfate or the uh, product and, and the cement based product. So just remember that, okay? So today we're going to be mixing some up and I'm going to go over the various substrates. So what you can see from my board here that I knocked up yesterday, uh, we've got some flooring grade plywood, uh, kindly donated by Hansen, um, which, is, which is really good. And we, we always use their ply in our academies. Uh, because we believe, well, we don't believe it, it definitely is the way forward uh, to have a recognised plywood that is fit for purpose. I've got some porcelain tiles, again, uh, all fixed, uh, and again, NA will go over them without the need for primer. We don't have to use one of these special gritty primers or anything like that. We've then got some of our DPM1C, which again, went down yesterday, so I'm within the window to put Arditex NA on the top, We've got some old bitumen adhesive residues, uh, again on the floor, which you come, a lot, uh, come across a lot when you've been uplifting the old Marley tiles and stuff like that. Just be wary if you are lifting up them Marley tiles or the old tiles, there is a chance that some do contain asbestos and the best place, and the adhesive can sometimes, and the best place to go for guidance on that is look at the Health and Safety Executive web, website. And there's a lovely little document there that tells you all about these tiles and and the removal of them. So that's a good little exercise. But something I want to talk about before I've mixed some up, and like I said last week, you guys have probably realised by now, I can talk a little bit, okay, is we'll, refer to, we'll look at the black bitumen first, yeah. Let's say we took up some wood blocks and we've got the old pitch bitumen, uh, or pitch left behind, okay. You know, a bit of common sense when you've removed them, as, give the pitch a good scrape over to remove any loose bits. And the same when you've removed your Marley tiles or anything like that, any loose bits of bitumen do need to come off the floor. And then vacuum it off, uh, especially with the bitumen, uh, vacuum it off. And then, and this is the important thing, is while the bitumen is, is nice and fresh, should I say, clean from when you've removed the tiles, that's the time to get your smoothing compound on it. Don't, um, don't leave it for other trades to traffic. Because they're traits in dust, plaster residues, other cement residues, even mud and dirt, over the top of that uh, black bitumen, and it sort of sticks to it because it's always a little bit tacky. And when you come along, it might be two, three, three weeks later, because somebody else has done the rip out, you're only still going to, if you're not careful, you're going to end up having to clean that bitumen up to be able to pry your Arditex NA. So just make sure the bitumen's clean, and ideally, as soon as them tiles have been removed, that's the time to get down your Arditex NA. Just a bit of a tip for you there. So we're going to mix them up. Uh, a bag of NA, uh, a bottle bag. It comes as a bag and a bottle, as I've got over here. Just to talk to you about the bags and bottles, we've now changed. Obviously, it was always 
black and yellow, so the yellow bags and black bottles. And anybody out there that's noticed uh, the bottles have changed, we've gone to a grey bottle. And these are now 100% recyclable. Okay, so uh, no issues with getting rid of them. They can go to, uh, to a recycled place and they can be recycled. So that's why they've all gone to a, to a grey bottle. And you'll notice uh, over here the CL liquid. I'll come back forward so you can see me. The CL liquid's gone to the same bottle, just different labels and different lids. So just make sure you're keeping your eye on the lids, obviously, when you're using the product. Yellow lid for NA, uh, red lid for CL. So I'm going to mix them up. Just before I do, whenever you're putting down a smoothing compound, it's really, really good to be prepared. So let's say we're going to do, I don't know, let's say we were doing this whole Root Academy that we've got here today. We we're going to mix all this, probably 10, 15 bags. Get your bags ready. Get your bottles ready. Get your bags, bags all ready. K15 last week that we went through enabled us not to have to rush, you know, not to keep that continual mix going, as you've, you've probably seen from the video. Well, with NA, you have only got a certain amount of wag, which is, which is really good, but there is a working time. So get yourself prepared before you start. Don't have to go back and open your bottles and get your bags ready. Because realistically, like I say on any of our training courses, yeah, less time over there mixing gives you more time, you know, getting it down on the floor and perfecting it. Okay? So, a little bit of a tip for you. Obviously, just make sure the lid's nice and loose. If you just get your knife, nice normal knife, just put a little bit of a triangle in the back of the bottle. If you can see that from there. All I've done is put a little triangle in the back of the bottle, carefully keep it on a, on a tilt, and just pour that in. It comes out a little bit faster, just speeds it up. If I just put my finger over there, you can see the normal. But you see the difference? So a little bit of a tip for you there. You might have seen that before, but when you come on a training course, we always show that. Just speeds up the, the process. So that bottle now, as I say, can go off for recycling. So I'm just going to mix the bag up uh, and just go through the benefits of, of putting this product down. So just bear with me. It's going to be a bit noisy for a minute. Just while I've got the extractor on. So just get it all ready to go. All set up. So bear with me a minute. As I explained last week, always a good thing to have a grading trowel at the side of it just to scrape off any residue on the side as you go. And then whisk. Now how long do we whisk for? Well we should be whisking for you know a good couple of minutes, but basically till it's lump free. Okay, it's very important that it's lump free. Sorry about having to watch me mix, but we're going to talk about mixing a little bit and you notice these paddles that I use. Let me just give that a whisk in some water. Job done, nice and clean, ready for the next mix. So my Aritex and A's now is all mixed up, so I'm just going to go over to my first bay and I'm going to apply it, okay? Now, I do see a lot of, um, you know, um, we get a lot of feedback that... Uh, NA doesn't flow that well. Well, you've seen I've mixed that up. Good whisk using a cage whisk, which I'll talk to you about whisks in a minute. And already it's got quite a good flow characteristics. You can see it slopping around in the bucket. So I don't know what's going on with my gloves today. A bit of a male function. But that's what happens while you're live. So I just get this product. 
and just tip it out. I don't know where you can see that from there. Hopefully one of the camera angles will pick that up. But already, look how good that is flowing. Now on top of ply, we want to go about six mil thick, no more than that. Um, try and keep it to that sort of thickness uh, as your maximum thickness. And I'm just going to trowel it in. So we've gone over ceramics there and ply. Uh, in regards to the questions, I'm sure there'll be some questions coming in in a minute. I'll get back, I'll get to them in the end. Uh, my team, who are keeping a, an eye out for that, will feed me the questions. I don't know whether you've noticed on previous weeks, I've um, um, always go back to my phone. So I'll just put that back over there. Flows really nice, nice and creamy consistency. So that's it on ply and ceramic tiles. And even if it was a polished porcelain, it will go over them. But just a thing to think about with, with, with obviously plywood first, make sure your plywood's being fastened correctly in line with culture practice. So that's a uh, hundred mil around the edge, 150 mil. Uh, in the middle uh, uh, so, so make sure it's fastened correctly and then it's good to go uh, in regards to your tiles um, always make sure they've been degreased off quite important yeah it's old you know existing tiles and stuff like that over over a number of years or whatever they do build up a bit of contamination on the surface and sometimes with the old quarry tiles and stuff like that because this will stick to quarry tiles is people polish them with all sorts of different things and again good idea to get that off get a stripper get a degreaser on there and get them clean before you put your smoothing compound on the top so that's how text na over them two substrates i'm just going to mix another bucket full up now just so you can see it going over the others put another nick in the back of my bottle Tractor on, second week running. So NA has a bag in a bottle, 3 mil to 12 mil, just as I'm mixing it up now. Just get this down, I'm going to talk to you about the whisks. So, over to my next area. Um, not sure if you can see this, so just to recap DPM 1C, no priming, bitumen residue, and some other adhesive residues. It, it, as long as it's not moisture soluble, it's fine to go over. Okay. So again, just pour it out. Good flow on it. Oh. 
always put the bucket to drip at the side so it's not going to be dripping where you're going to be working. I'll just grab my trowel. Uh, and as I spoke to you guys a couple of weeks ago, if you need to go a bit thicker with this product, we then incorporate uh, a bit of aggregate, a bit of the Ardex uh, coarse aggregate, and that will then let, allow you to take it to 30 mil. So ideal for, you know, filling in or building up any flaws uh, beforehand. Just something to think about. One of the things that I always say on my training courses, if you have got to build up a floor, and I'm sure I told you this the other week, if you are building up a floor and it does need a DPM, always do your build up first, yeah? Again, we, we don't like going more than six mil on the top of a DPM. Um, and if you're gonna build up, you're better off doing it first. And the good thing about pre-smoothing for the DPM, it, it enables you to get a nice uh, film thickness when you're coming in. So there's the first bit gone down. So not an issue. And then the second bit, just pour it out nice. This is going on obviously a lot, a lot thicker than the normal sort of standard three mil coat. Um, looking at my tapes on the edge, I'm definitely on the six mil limit uh, with this. Uh, but in regards to NA, at three millimetres, three mil thick, you will get five square metres out of a bag. And that's something uh, which, which obviously uh, is quite good. There we go. Nice, good finish. Now I know there are a lot of guys out there that are really good on the trowel that can actually get a really good finish on NA without spike rolling, which is good. But you can spike roll it if you need to. Not a problem. You say, I'll just run that through. Just takes out any blemishes that I might have in the product. So what have I done there, really? Where does C uh, where does uh, Arditex NA sit? Well, it's a really, really good product for refurbishments. Wherever you've got any uh, any substrates that you need to go over, like tiles, plywood, uh, adhesive residues, DPMs, it sits really well in that market. Okay, really, really uh, well engineered product. I've used it for years, for years before I even joined Ardex. Um, I used to use it all the time, especially for, well, for all my jobs, tiling or, or, or LVTs and stuff like that, uh, anything. So we just go over these. Okay, that's been down uh, a little while, but it's still spiking up, which is fine. Really good finish on them. Ooh. Hope that's not a customer skirting board. Obviously, if it was, I would uh, be busy cleaning it off now. However, my little tip is always spend a little bit of time and mask up the skirting boards. Saves you a lot of work at the end if you do get it everywhere. So, Arditex NA, real, real good product for refurbishment work. And like you say, five square meters out of a bag. We'll go to 30 mil if you add chippings to it. Doesn't need a primer unless it's a calcium sulfate, but you've seen it go over all in substrates. It'll even go on some polished porcelain uh, tiles, not an issue. It'll stick to them. Terrazzos, um, quarry tiles. So, and, and if you're not sure what NA will go over, obviously give our guys a buzz, give us a ring, or just look at the data sheet for the product. Most of the stuff that goes over is covered in there, and there's some useful little bit of tips and so on of what you can do uh, when you go over different substrates. So that is Arditex NA, like I say, it's been around a while. And the good thing about this is it's it, it's, it's pretty fast drying, uh, two hour walk on, so people can get back in their kitchens or whatever, hallways and so on, and four hour fit on, okay? So four hours, you can start installing. Yep, that's in good conditions, right? You know, we, we all test them in the same conditions. Um, 
and ceramic tiles for any, any tilers watching us after three hours you can ceramic tile on this product so really good but I'll go back and recap all that later so let's move on to Arditex CL and I'm sure quite a few of you have now seen CL out in the market um, and for anybody that's not sure what CL stands for it stands for contract latex yes so Arditex contract latex and this product is really based for or, or, or ideal for all your new build work so where you've got a, um, a new concrete or a new sand cement screen that's been poorly laid or it's got a few issues or it just needs some levels making up this is where Arditex CL really really uh, comes into its own okay very cost effective smoothing compound it will go to 10 mil as a bag in a bottle uh, if you want to go thicker than 10 mil again like the Arditex NA we add chippings into it however CL does need a primer okay and uh, it's very important it has a, 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 a primer in place you can't go direct with it okay so just bear that in mind now if we've got a, a new build a lot of new builds now are up and they're all a mad mad rush so we've got a new build you might go in and do your moisture test and it's very important that you do your moisture test all right and you're getting a reading above the required 75 percent um, so it needs a it needs to be dealt with well any new build will have a structural membrane in the building that will be uh, more or less guaranteed uh, so you can use and as long as the readings below 95 percent you can use the MVS 95 like I showed you last week very easy product to apply I'm just going to go over it again MVS 95 it's you don't have to mix the two parts together it's ready mixed really good coverage 36 square meters out of one tub that's at two coats it has to have two coats bear that in mind really 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 lace up your roller with the product and when you put your first coat on, I don't know if you notice I've just glided across. What I want you to do is a bit of pressure on your roller and just work it in to the surface of your screed or your concrete. But just bear in mind, when you've got your screed of concrete, there's always some sort of preparation required, even with NA in a way. If you've got plaster drop-ins, you know, dust contamination or anything like that, it's all got to come off. So just remember that. So always the floor is going to need a minimal of a scrape over and sometimes it needs an SDR machine uh, just to tidy up any of them other trays. Now, I hope there's no plasters watching and I'm sure you're not all the same, but sometimes I go to jobs where, um, um, you know, you go there and there's as much plaster on the floor, probably a bit of over-exaggeration there, as there is on the walls. But, uh, you know, it's, it's important for us floor layers that we do get that off. Um, so you see how easy that is to apply the first coat usually goes off in about half an hour and then it has a second coat in the opposite direction now the good thing about MVS and the CL system obviously quick way of dealing with any moisture in that slab and um, you, you, within a uh, 24 hour window CL will go direct to the surface but again something to remember with the MVS 95 is once we put it down, we tell it's two coats, try and avoid people trafficking it, yeah? Um, that's quite important, because obviously there's putting dust contamination back on the surface, and sometimes I've seen it that heavily trafficked that they've had to clean it all off and give it a third coat of MVS. So ideally, realistically, we don't want to be in that situation. So it has one coat one way, and then it has a second coat in the opposite direction, to create that cross-linked effect but just remember with this it's got to have the two coats don't try using a thick pile roller you know I've seen people putting it on with squeegees it doesn't work the only way to get your layering system that you need in this product is to put it down with a roller like I'm doing now so really really put it on work it in like I'm doing let the first coat go off and then it has a second coat in the opposite direction I'm just going to leave that roller just sitting there because none of you want to see me clean the roller up so that's that MVS 95 so like you say new build where CL really comes into its own if it is above 75 percent but below 95 percent quickest way of dealing with that moisture is a coat or two coats of MVS 95 and as you say within an hour and a half that's almost gone now I know it is quite warm in here today with the sunshine we're having um, that that's that's that'll go off hour and a half CL direct to the surface job done if it is dry so you come across a dry job yeah it's below 75 percent 
RH, then obviously we just say prime it. So we'd use our P51 primer, and what we'll do, like I did last week, but I will show it again, is, be careful with that, is one part primer, two, three parts water. Simple and easy. And like I said to you last week, I don't know whether any can remember, maybe you didn't tune in last week, is uh, we always recommend with our primer that you apply it with a broom, not a roller. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to fill in all them little capillary holes in the screed or in the concrete that might be causing you pinhole in effect even though you've primed. So if you brush it on, that should stop that happening. And again, all I'm going to do, hopefully it's not going to be too messy, pour it out. Yeah, I've got my little broom today and I'm just going to work it in. Now a lot of people say to me, yeah, but that's quite messy. Well, actually, once you get used to doing it, it's not too bad at all. And work it in. Make sure you work it into the surface, like I'm doing. And then a, a normal porous screed or porous concrete, that's going to suck that in pretty quick. This smoother compound, it'll probably take a bit longer to penetrate into. But really, really work it in. And it's a really, really good way of applying your P51 uh, primer and it's a you're really knitting it into the surface even if it was a calcium sulfate you're really knitting it in and it's going to benefit uh, from that and obviously hopefully stop your your pinhole in effect as well so it adds a good adhesion but it also helps stop the the pinhole in i'll just tap that off hopefully i've put enough out now i don't want too much there because it'll never dry so I'm sure you can appreciate how easy that is. Very fluidy. But CL, please remember, does need a primer. And it's, a, it's for new, new builds, new concretes, new sand cement screeds, uh, and stuff like that. Not quite enough. Almost there. Don't scrape it out. You know, always give yourself a little bit more. Primer doesn't cost very much. A good thing about P51, lots of solids in it, so it's a really good primer uh, for creating that adhesion and that uh, and dealing with any suction in the floor. Just on that note, and I know it's going back to NA, if you have got a floor, uh, an old concrete floor, or an old, you know, a sand, sand cement screen, that's going to be quite absorbent and you gain you want to uh, stop that pinhole in you want to stop any suction with Arditex NA because it's suitable to be used it's, it's moisture tolerant uh, it's all singing all dancing in that front yeah you can use water you can damp the floor down brush some water in like I've done with the primer just use water and that will do the same job with Arditex NA now uh, we'll come to some questions at the end but I'm probably going to ask about somebody's going to ask about pre-smoothing with CL We'll talk about that in a little while, okay? So that's your P, uh, MVS95 P51 primer. But please, guys, out there, I hope you can all, you're all tuning in. Just remember, CL does need a primer, okay? So if you notice here, I don't know where we can see this, I've got this white on the top. Well, what I've done here, I did it yesterday. I put some of our Ardex DPM1C down. Uh, so this is a floor, so it was to try and replicate maybe an old concrete floor that the reading was above, 95%, uh, no structural membrane in the building. So I was able to get the DPM1C direct. And all I've done is put our Ardex P4 primer, which is our gritty primer, comes ready mixed, on the top of the, the, the DPM1C, as soon as it had cured. Uh, and then just got a bit of the... Uh, the, the P4 primer, like I've got here, ready mixed, and a very, very thin film. You don't want to be lacing this on. You don't want it too thick. Some guys really, really put too thick a coat on. As you can see here, it's a very, very thin film. And just work it in. Simple and easy to apply, and goes off in approximately 30 minutes. So ideal, if you have to use the DPM1C, you can get it direct. 
to your, your concrete or your screw because it's got a higher reading. And sometimes we do moisture testing, you know, we do it as part of our service. You guys all know that. Um, we will get readings of maybe 96, 97. So in that scenario, you're going to have to use the, the, um, the, the, the epoxy DPM1C, so the, the D Ardex DPM1C, and then allow it to dry and use the P4 primer. So that's what we've done there. And it gives you a nice mechanical key to fix to. So I'm just going to uh, come over here, uh, get my next bucket ready. Just going to watch off the gauging trial. Just give me a second. Hope you can all still hear me. Just so we're not getting any cross contamination with products. That's all ready to go. My whisk's nice and clean. Just in regards to whisks, one of the things that we always do at RX and always have done, and they've done it a long, long time before I joined them, is they always recommend for mixing a smoothing compound, it should be a cage whisk, okay? Uh, not a spiral whisk. These do mix it a lot better. They don't introduce any heat into the mix, okay? So again, if you're introducing heat into the mix, you're gonna get less working time. Um, so these don't do that. And one of the things that was said to me by uh, uh, a company that we that supply us with a lot of our gear, Colomex, they came over and gave us some training. And they were telling me, and quite I didn't think about it before, obviously NA and CL got polymers in the powder. Well, when these whisks, when this whisk going round, it's hitting them polymers four times and it evenly spread them throughout the mix. Whereas a spiral whisk, they're just following each other around the bucket and it's very difficult to, um, to get them all mixed up. So really, really good, good, good things. You can get these ones from Ardex that fit in a normal chuck. But again, if you're, if you're looking for one to fix in your mixing drills, then if you speak to somebody like Yance or somebody like that, I'm sure they'll be able to get a hold of the Colomix ones with the M14 thread for you. Okay, so really good tool. I'm only using the cordless mixer today because I'm only mixing up a few bags. If I was mixing more than that, I'd have a big mixer out. So goggles on, extractor ready. Again, lucky to have the use of the big extractor today. So get that ready to go, get me uh, CL. Another good thing to do, always give your liquid a good shake because you don't know how long it's been sat on somebody's shelf. Um, put your nick in, it does make a difference. Two seconds putting that nick in, but it does speed the process up for you. So any new build, CL. Now what CL's got, got really got our uh, new and improved flow characteristics in it, which you're going to see in a minute. But let me just mix it up. Again, even with CL, good practice, any smoothing compound, get your gauging trial, just get off any bits on the side of the bucket. So, P4 primer's gone off now, got a trowel, pour some out, see the flow on that already, just turn my bucket to the side, and again, this trowel's in nice. Push it up to my mock skirting boards. 
I think it looks like I've done a very good job of mixing that. Sat the mixer. I'm sure you're all laughing at that now. But what I want to get across is how good that does flow out. I'll just do that. Well, I'm just waiting for that. I'm just going to grab the whisk. Yeah. Don't be frightened to do that. Notice a few little lumps in it. Okay. Just going to give it another whisk up. Just to remove them. a trouble when you're doing things live okay but never be frightened to get up and um, and re re readdress that see where I've put the little scratches in it's blended into itself pour a bit more another tip for you always pour your first bit over the top okay bucket the side so it's not dripping where I'm going to be working and again just trial it out and again CL three at three mil you'll get uh, five square meters out of a bag so what you'll get a lot of jobs you've got a new concrete floor new sand cement screen it's a little bit out of uh, level it's not maybe SR1 it's maybe SR2 if you need to get it to SR1 then um, CL ideal for that see how easy it is to apply very um, very fluidy as you say it's got that superior flow technology just pushing that in you just see it just flowing there okay with CL again walk on after two hours but you won't fit on this uh, until 12 hours okay so something just to remember that uh, pour a bit more not going to have quite enough for the full bay uh, but I will mix up another one so I just I'm just going to drop that in there and just see what happens while I just mix up the next one I know you're all just watching because you want to see who's won the pin rake. Uh, sorry, you've got to put up with me in between. <laughs> so just chuck that in. Get the extraction on. See if I can lift, mix this to a lump free consistency this time. So, again, get my gauging trowel, just get up any build up off the side of the bucket. And I'm not sure if you can hear me while I'm mixing, but just the other thing about mixing as well is it's almost like a science that. The bucket does make a difference in regards to your mixing. You want to avoid mixing these gorilla buckets because they are um, they don't create a very good centrifugal force. So the best type of bucket for mixing in is a tall, narrow bucket like we use at Ardex.
hopefully it's lump free now. Just going to show you another little tip. You just want to check on your lumps, etc. Just get your little gauging trowel, just get a little bit of product and just pull it up just to see if there's any lumps. And that should be okay looking at that, so that's a little test you can do. So again, all I'm going to do now is pour some out, chuck it on, and just to show you that you can pin rake with it as well. So if I was doing a big commercial job, yeah, I wouldn't be on my hands and knees with my trowel. I'd be chucking it in with my pin rake, again, like we did last week. How easy is that? So in regards to applying it, it's very, very easy. But as you say, just please, please make sure you do apply your primers uh, correctly, etc. Or deal with any moisture in the floor. So I'm just going to drop that in, get that finished off. We might fit on these bays later on. So like I say, CL, two hour walk on but you won't be fitting on it till uh, tomorrow. I'm just gonna, come on, come on, fill it in. Just the last bit there, I'll pull it in. Very good. Just leave that bit there for a second. I'm just gonna wash that off in a minute. So, as you can see, really, really good flow, especially where I've done it with the pin rake, uh, highly many marks. Just going to go and give this a shake off just give me one second just to just avoid the cross contamination so just going to give it a quick um, rinse and i just want to show you something when i do that i'm just going to rinse it off i know you can't see me doing this but something i want to talk about uh, and it happens a lot so Now, sorry about going out there, but uh, hopefully you could hear me. I just give that a wash off outside. But what we get a lot of sometimes is people that have dipped it in water to keep it clean and then pulled it straight off. And you're getting water contamination from the spike roller, as you can see there. You want to keep that to the minimal, all right? I do go to jobs sometimes where there's puddles of water from the spike roller on the top. Uh, try, try your best to avoid that because it will affect the surface. So look at the finish, the superior finish that is giving. It's almost as close to you're going to get with your K39s of this world, uh, but being a latex product. But obviously it hasn't quite got the same amount of working time as we demonstrated last week with the K39. So again, you've got your NA for your refurbs, CL, new build. To me, they're the two products that I would keep in my warehouse as my day-to-day -day, uh, systems, okay? There you go. I will, almost ready to take some questions. I'm just going to drop them there for a minute. Something else I just want to show you. I'm just going to pop outside again, excuse me for being rude. But what I've had, and while I've been doing this demo, it we've been going now for, for three quarters now. You've probably all switched off by now. But... What I have got is I've had a bag of smoothing compound and a bottle of smoothing compound outside in the sun. And I'm going to bring it in and we're going to do a temperature check on it. And the, the important to that is I want you to, um, to uh, understand that when you're mixing these smoothing compounds, don't leave your bag sitting in the sun because it's going to, you're going to have less working time. Yeah, it's going to go off on you like that. So about storage of your equipment or your bags is quite important. So let me go and get that. Just bear with me one second. I'm sure you can you can hear me and it is a lovely day out here today at Ardex UK. So here's my bag of CL. And that's been sitting out there now for three quarters of an hour, a little bit more, probably an hour. Uh, which camera would be the best? Um, yeah, so I just grabbed my thermometer. Don't know whether uh, can you see it from there? No. 
I'll tell you what I'll do, try and get it pretty close to the bag to see if you can pick that up. So I say, that one at the moment is reading 35 degrees and the bottle itself, I don't know if you can see that, is uh, reading at 26, still going up, okay. So really, really, it'd help if I held it right. Yeah, so that one's 27, and the bag, 34, 35, yeah. So it's gone up to 35. That's just been sitting out in the sun for, as you say, three quarters of an hour. If you've got them sitting out there for three, three to four hours, for an hour, two hours, you know, setting up your mixing area, cement and the liquid all stores the heat. So it's gonna give you less working time. So something to think about, store your product in areas where out of direct sunlight and stuff like that. So, they're getting longer and longer, these sessions, every week. So I'm just going to grab the competition winners for next week. I'm just grabbing my phone as well. Jesus, that's one. Let's just see what questions we've had come through this week. So, just let me go to my uh, questions. Here we go. So one question's coming there. Why do we have industrial standards for three mil smoothing compound? I think uh, you get a better finish at four mil. Chris, Chris Hughes, good question. The, 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 the standard says a minimum of three mil, okay, or uh, four when you put in pervious floor coverings and stuff like that. I've got no issues with you going thicker than that. It's not a problem whatsoever. But the idea of that three mil coat is when you use your flooring adhesive, most flooring adhesives contain water as, as the carrier to be able to spread them. Uh, by putting it on a three mil, obviously it gives you a nice smooth finish, but also it allows the moisture in the adhesive to penetrate into the smoothing compound. Uh, and again, aiding your adhesive to, to, to go off quicker uh, and, and, and stuff like that. So that's why we say three mil, but there's no issues in going four mil, but they look at the minimum to try and aid the coverage. Okay, hope that clears that one up for you. Uh, I can't see any more that's come in today, just that one. So hopefully that's it. I'll just leave my phone there for a minute in case uh, I get any more come through. So last week, I offered to give away a pin rake, which I found in the back. Don't tell anybody here, yeah? Nice new shiny pin rake. I was gonna give away a bet measuring bucket, uh, five bags of K39 for you to try, and a P51 primer. And we had 13 entries this week, which is really good, a lot better than last week. So the odds have gone down and they're all in me bowl. One of these days I'm gonna drop this. Give them a good shake. I've got it in my hand. So today's winner is Josh Hughes. Okay, so well done, Josh. Uh, that gear will be uh, coming out to you. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get that to you. So well done, Josh, uh, for, for, for A, for entering and obviously winning. And thanks to everybody else that's entered. As I'm feeling really generous today, uh, and I know our customer service team's probably gonna kill me, but because we had such a lot of entries, 13 people bothered to, to enter, I'm gonna see if we can send you all a T-shirt, the Ardix T-shirt, okay? Um, I was expecting my phone to light up to say, what are you doing, Steve? But no, we're okay. Um, so, Another giveaway for next week. Well, just before we do that, um, we put a poll on. I'm sweating here. It's never been heard of before. Uh, we put a poll on. Um, when would be the best time to watch the uh, Facebook Live demonstrations? I was hoping you were all going to go for 10 o'clock on a Tuesday. But you're, you, you all came back and said you'd prefer them in the evenings, which we're happy to do. It's not a problem. Um, and it's great. And it's great to get the questions Get, get the questions through so the evening probably would be the better time but what we're going to probably do is switch it to maybe twice a month or once a month depending because you're all getting back to work now okay so we're not going to do them every week uh, but I'm more than happy to do them on a Tuesday evening uh, and we can go through some sub, uh, some, some substrate types and again please please put your suggestions in of what you'd like to see is there anything different we do you want to look at some of our flooring adhesives whatever you want to see just get in touch just drop us a little message and we can facilitate making that happen. You might want to look at some products that you've never seen before, like our super duper fast setting sand and cement screeds and how easy they actually are to apply. You, whatever you'd like to see, just please drop us a line 
and we can set up um, them demonstrations for you. So again, so this week I'm going to give away five bags of CL. Okay, I have to be careful here. I'm going to get shot. Five bags of CL, and I'll chuck an MVS95 in as well. Okay, so five CL and an MVS95 for for uh, this week, and I need a uh, a question. So today's question for uh, is going to be. Um, how soon how soon can you fit a floor covering on Arditex CL okay the question was in there nice and easy how soon can you fit a floor covering on Arditex CL so finally just to recap any refurb work anywhere where you've got some sort of um, some sort of uh, contamination on the floor or whatever you know, make sure it's solid and, and so on. But then I detect NA every day of the week, fixing uh, that superior, again, really good flow characteristics. As you can see there, um, fast setting. You know, you can see it's gelled over already. Two hours we're walking on that. And in these conditions in here, yeah, we're on 20 today. So um, you're going to be fitting on that in four hours, not an issue. Um, so it's really good in that market. There's no reason why you can't use this on new build, but realistically, your better option probably would be CL to, 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 to be co more cost effective in that market, okay? And then CL, new build work, new sand cement screens, new concretes, just remember it does need a primer or a, or a, or a moisture control system, an MVS95 suits that really well because it's ideal for new build, or P51 if the floor is dry, yeah, if it's below 75%, chuck your, uh, dilute your P51 down, get it applied to the floor, and then get your CL down. And I don't know whether you can see from one of the cameras, but you can see the watermarks from the, from the spike roller. And realistically, I wouldn't want much more watermarks on the surface than that than what I've got there. Yeah, The very first day, uh, there's a bit of water puddling on the surface. I wouldn't want to see much more than that because it will create, it will make the surface go soft. Okay, one last check on my phone. See if there's any more questions come in and then we're going to call it a day. Um, somebody's asked, uh, do we have a rapid levelling compound? Yeah, we have... Uh, RX855, again, if you want to see that next week, we can chuck that down. RX855 is a water mix. You do have to apply a primer, but you can fit on that after 60 minutes, okay, so uh, an hour. Now, I know there are various other ones that are a little bit quicker than ours, but what ours does is it gives you a good amount of working time. You're not rushing to get it down. It's not going to go off on you halfway through because it's got that 60-minute uh, 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 setting time, okay? So we, so we do RX855 for that one. Um, when will the academy be open uh, to whoever's asked that question we're, we're going by what the government is saying and we're monitoring what they're saying very closely uh, but my answer is we're probably little, I'm going to look around see how we're fixed in August that's not a definite see how we're fixed for August um, and making sure we can set it up to, to run things where you know we're not going to um, put anybody in, in uh, any risk of catching this virus okay so I'm looking at August but again I've got to be sensitive and I want to make sure it fits in with what the government is saying and Ardex's policies on that and most of all you you know anybody that wants that wants to come in you know I don't want to put them in harm's way um, so so we're monitoring that closely but I am thinking maybe August but don't bank on it we've just got to see how things go if we get a spike then that might go all pear shaped but let's see how we go hopefully we're going to be okay um, so hopefully that's the academy, but yeah, the sooner we can get it open, and again, don't forget, we've got Academy North and we've got Academy South, so if, you, if you're living up the north of the country and you're struggling to come down to the South Academy, we, we've now got one in the north, uh, and you're more than welcome to come there um, for exactly the same facilities, so you can come up, up there, so you've got the either option, but watch this space, we'll keep you posted as soon as we're up and running. Uh, we'll let you know uh, and get the courses back up and running. And as you say, we'll, 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 you know, great to see people attend. So there's no more questions coming through to me today. Um, just switch back just to make sure. No, no other questions come through. So, guys, another long session. It's almost an hour. Sorry about that. I hope you've all enjoyed it. I hope you found that useful. Uh, again, we'll post when the next one's going to be, but it's going to be in an evening, a Tuesday evening. So... Uh, uh, watch the space and we'll let you know thanks guys don't forget to enter the competition 
uh, and we'll uh, see you all next time. Cheers. <laughs>